Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, so on the last video that I made, um, there was a problem with the convergence of uh, some of the sums uh, that I used in order to find a closed for, or a uh, an infinite sum representation for this integral right here. Um, I'll link to that video and you can see what I mean. There's quite a few comments on it pointing out my mistake. Um, I'm going to leave the video up because you do you do get to the right answer, but my process was flawed and would not always be true every time. So, in other words, um, basically, um, the commenter stated that my my representation, my infinite sum representation for this, although correct, could not be verified based on my steps. So I am going to rederive it, and I'm going to try to be as rigorous as possible. All right, so now we're going to consider only values for t that are greater than zero. So let's keep that in mind. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use integration by parts on this. Now, it might be tempting to try to let your u be just natural log squared x. That doesn't give you anything good. That does not result in anything good because then you have to integrate x to the t over 1 minus x all squared, and that's, that's not going to work for you. So this is our setup, and I'm going to be using the tabular method just to make this a little bit quicker. Sorry. get back here all right all right so here's our integration by parts set up again using the tabular method um, or the di method as uh, black pen red pen uh, calls it uh, so you can see we're taking derivatives of this x to the t natural log squared x and we are integrating 1 over 1 minus x squared and then you just go all the way down three times. So you're actually doing integration by parts twice, technically. So this is our, our u, this is our du, and this is our du du, or du of du, well, whatever, the second derivative with, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so there, we have our setup. Don't forget we have the plus, minus, plus, minus. So it's going to be this times this evaluated at the bounds, which are 0 and 1, minus this times this, which just makes it a plus this times this evaluated at the bounds, and then uh, plus the integral from 0 to 1 of the product of these two functions. All right. So this is what we end up with. And I'm sorry if this is a little bit hard for anybody to see. Um, there's a lot of stuff I have to fit on the screen here. Anyway, we have this from 0 to 1, and we have this from 0 to 1, and then minus our integral. Let me try to center this a little bit better. There we go. All right, so pause the video and go ahead and verify all this if you'd like. Now, this seems really, really nasty, but um, for uh, t values greater than zero, um, if you evaluate these at the bounds and take the limits, um, you will find that this, this whole thing right here goes away. If you evaluate this for t greater than zero, take the limit as x goes to one, you're gonna get zero. Uh, for t values greater than zero if you take the limit as x goes to zero you're also going to get zero and the same for this one verify that if you'd like it is true um those those um those limits go to zero so we're just left with this integral right here all right so now we've whittled keep doing that sorry there we go so now we have this. 
this this is now our our f of t this is what we're trying to find and this looks really really nasty but um the thing is we can we can distribute a lot of this stuff we can simplify this integrand and then split it up into three separate integrals like this again go ahead and verify this for yourself if you'd like um i assure you it's correct um you can break this one integral up into these three integrals all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find just a generalized expression for things like natural the integral from zero to one of natural log one minus x times x to the a times either one or natural log x or natural log squared x and this is uh that way we can plug in a is equal to t minus two and just match them up so if we have a function f of a that's equal to this we can pretty we can pretty easily find that it is equal to this sum and by the way this is going to we're going to restrict a to values greater than negative two um because we need our t to be greater than zero okay so we have that restriction on a and we have this is equal to this i'm not going to go through the process of of getting from here to here uh, what you do is you use the Taylor series representation for natural log one minus X, um, and then figure it out from there. Okay. Well, that implies that this integral, all we do is replace this a with a T minus two, and that equals this. So this integral you can see is right here. So we could replace this with this. And we're going to do that later. But first, we're going to take uh, two derivatives with respect to a of our f of a. And this is what you end up with. And basically, um, the thing we're interested in really is these equalities on the right-hand side right here. All these things are true. Again, pause the video. Do it yourself if you'd like. Um, it, it's a lot of work and I'm not going to be showing a lot. I'm not going to be showing most of it. This is, it's pretty, this is involved, but simple stuff that I'm doing right now. I'm just, I'm giving you the basic outline. All right. So now we have these equalities on the right and we can replace them inside this expression for F of T. So that's what we do next. So now, remember, our original f of t was this. And we can replace this integral, this integral right here, with this sum. Likewise, we can replace this integral right here with this sum. And we can replace this integral right here with this sum. And if we do that, this is what we end up with. I literally just replaced all the integrals with their their sums all right and now i just do a little bit of simplification you can see i i got rid of that negative sign i brought the two inside i brought this t minus t squared inside and flipped it around to get rid of the negative sign and then i did the same thing over here i just brought this inside factored out a two again i canceled these two negative signs and brought in the two so that's that's no mystery there that's pretty easy and then um the next step is crucial because don't forget um if you remember in my original problem that i did uh yesterday i believe we needed f at zero um we can't really do f at zero but we can take the limit as as um as t approaches zero but the problem with that is um, what happens if t approaches zero? What happens at our first term in all of these? Well, we're going to have t is equal to zero and n is equal to one. And we're going to have a one minus one, which is a zero in the denominator. That's no good. We can't have that. So I thought I was stuck at this point. But then I just decided, um, why not try um, 
let's just get rid of the first term. Let's let's start our index at two. Now, if we do that on each one of our sums, basically what we're doing is we're getting rid of the n is equal to one term in each one of these sums. So I did that. I took away the n is equal to one term in each one of the sums, and then I added it back. I just added, I plugged in uh, n is equal to one and just, just added it back. That's all I did. Okay. And if you, um, if you go ahead and uh, evaluate this, you're going to find that for all values of t not equal to zero, because if t is equal to zero, again, this, uh, this expression right here that I'm moving my hand around, it's undefined because you'll end up with zero in the denominator. But for all other values of t, this expression right here is is zero. They cancel. They it cancels each other. They cancel out. So basically, we can just get rid of this as long as we have the restriction that t is not equal to zero. So that just leaves us with this sum right here. All right, we're almost done. So we have f of t is equal to these three sums, the addition, the sum of these three sums. All right. And now I just I just want to state in the next step that if you that these two things are equivalent. Uh, basically, why I wanted to do that is because that's exactly what we have inside the sums. I don't know why I switched them around, but this one is right here. This one is right here, and this one is right here. So um, I just wanted to, because we can bring these all together into one sum. So we could have the sum of this, and this is, it simplifies to this. So all this right here simplifies to this. All right, so we're just going to have, now we just, have, we've whittled it down to one sum. So our f of t is equal to this one sum right here. And then if we subtract one from the index and add one to all the ends inside our sum, this is what we end up with. And this, this was um, the sum that I claimed our integral was equal to um, in the last video, which it turns out it is. And I just showed it here. So in conclusion, and I hope I was... I hope I was thorough enough um, and didn't make, and there's nothing really, I don't, I don't think I overlooked anything. Um, it all checks out. I believe all my steps are justified. So in conclusion, this is true. For t greater than zero, we have this equality. All right. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I hope that um explained uh a little bit well i hope that satisfies those of you who noticed my mistake in the last video but uh anyway hope you enjoyed that we'll see you next time